In the name of the risen Christ, I bid you welcome and good morning. It is good to be together on this World Communion Sunday, and you may notice that uh, things look a little different, and we're going to be doing communion a little differently this morning as well. Uh, you'll see on this table here, there is a globe, and as well, there's a globe um, up here on the altar uh, celebrating that it's World Communion Sunday. And then on this table, there are six different kinds of bread from places around the world. So um, every culture, um, every uh, country, every nation uh, around our world has some kind of bread. And so we are representing that this morning. And during communion, uh, you'll be coming down the center aisle. Uh, you'll be tearing, picking out what bread you want to receive. And then hang on to that piece of bread that you break off. Uh, and then Pastor Stephanie and I will be on either side here. And you can dip it into the cup and then receive communion. Also, if you would like, uh, the, with the globe there, uh, if you want to pray for a place around our globe, around the world, uh, maybe Florida <laughs> with the terrible Hurricane Ian, uh, Ian destruction, or South Carolina, uh, pray for the Ukraine, uh, pray for your um, maybe the, where your, your, the country your family came from, um, or pray for the United States. Uh, there's, uh, would just ask, you can actually place your hand on the globe if you'd like to. Um, but then come forward and receive. I will be asking the, the front section to, to come and receive first, and then the back section will receive after that. Um, and the most important thing together to remember is just not to tear off the bread and pop it in your mouth because then you're not going to have the bread to dip in the cup. <laughs> so that's, that's the only way um, you, we can mess this up. Uh, if you um, would prefer not to come forward, uh, the ushers will have communion to bring to you. Um, the only thing we can't do for you is you don't get your choice of bread, because we can't figure those logistics out. But, but um, this is a special way to celebrate World Communion. Sunday and remember our brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world who are also celebrating communion this morning. So, but let us prepare our hearts to worship God and hear these words. In beauty and in mystery, we see the face of God. In the common and the ordinary, we know the love of Christ. In the bread and the cup, we taste the presence and power of God. In the song and in the story, we share the joy of faith. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. We're not aware of any birthdays this week, but we do celebrate with Bob and Mary Jo Meyer on their wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Today is World Communion Sunday. We'll have fellowship with coffee and cookies after the service. A special event is this afternoon at 4 o'clock. The blessing of the animals here in the church property. It's my understanding that if your pet is unable to physically attend, Pastor Kathleen will be happy to bless a picture that works for our household because our rescue dog, Penny, does not play well with others. I don't know if you've ever had a pet like that. So we'll be bringing her picture to be blessed. Tuesday morning, there's Bible study at 10.30, game night at 6 o'clock. On Wednesday, handbells will meet at 2. And at 3, Matt. Well,
Well, at three o'clock, we are going to have our first choir practice of the year. So welcome you guys all to come and join us. Even if you haven't been in the choir in the past, we are going to have a lot of fun. We've selected several songs that are very achievable uh, in a short period of time. So we'll be able to get started here pretty soon. So I encourage anyone interested in joining the choir to just come at 3 p.m. We'll be meeting in the choir room and practice goes for no more than an hour. So you can still get home to dinner and all the good stuff. Thank you. Matt, uh, is it okay if I come and join your choir practice? Oh, and we will have a surprise special guest. <laughs> I hope to see many of you there. Today's communion offering goes to support UMCOR. And this offering is especially important at this time because we need a speedy response to assist with Hurricane Ian, and as well to provide ongoing support for our Ukrainian Methodist congregation. So please, if at all possible, uh, I hope you'll add that offering to what you do today. Our fall women's retreat will take place here at the church on Friday, October the 21st, and then on Saturday, October the 22nd. It promises to be a wonderful time of fellowship, spiritual nourishment, and great food. Registration forms can be found out on the NorthX table. Please register by October the 18th and consider bringing a friend. It's going to be a great time. Our Shoebox Ministry boxes have arrived. You can find them in the NorthX as well and also in the Fellowship Hall on the Mission table. All are invited to attend the Toller Christmas Party here on December the 15th. We need you to register by October the 20th. And if you're in a travel mood, please check out the Metho Travel Display in the Fellowship Hall as you enjoy coffee and cookies today. And now please stand as you are able to join in our call to worship. Gather round the table, there's room for you and me. Gather round the table, eat and drink, be made new. Gather round the table, it's big enough for all. Gather round the table, listen deep, hear God's call. Gather round the table, all you hungry, thirsty. Gather round the table, doubts and burdens set free. Free. And now I invite you to remain standing and join in our opening hymn, I Come With Joy, number 617. I come with joy to meet the Lord, forgiven, loved, and free. to recall his life laid down for me, his life laid down for me. I come with Christians far and near to find us all a friend, the new community of love in Christ's communion bread, in Christ's communion be seated. Let us join together 
in our prayer of confession. Eternal and merciful God, you have loved us with a love beyond our understanding, and you have set us on paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Yet we have strayed from your way. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed through what we have done and what we have left undone. As we remember the lavish gift of your grace, we praise you and give you thanks that you forgive us yet again. Grant us now, we pray, the grace to die daily to sin and to rise daily to new life in Christ, who lives and reigns with you and in whose strong name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Uh, that felt like a little t bit of spring um, <laughs> with in the fall, so love that. Um, before we take our offering this morning, I just want to say another word about UMCOR. Um, it is our, our communion offering for, for this month, but if you did not bring um, a, a check for that, uh, we'll be receiving uh, checks for UMCOR, particularly in, in our church's response to Hurricane Ian uh, all this month. And so the wonderful thing about UMCOR is that when it is a designated amount, 100% goes to that need. Uh, it's got one of the, the best rating among all the charities. And the other thing that I love about UMCOR is that it is our church in action. Um, right at the time of the disaster or the crises. Um, but UMCOR uh, stays around. Um, UMCOR is still working uh, on Hurricane Katrina issues. Uh, so we don't, we, we, we Methodists stick in there. Um, uh, we, we are there at, at the start, in the, the middle, and, and there until the end, as long as there are people in need. So uh, I, it's, it's one of my favorite things our, our church does. And so I encourage you to reach out to the, you know, the terrible devastation that we, saw, we, we have seen on our TV screens and computer screens with um, uh, both sides of Florida and then in South Carolina and um, so would ask you to pray for that and then I also just want to say a word about the the women's retreat uh, it's coming up in just just a little over two weeks uh, looking forward to it very much and uh, hope that that the the women of our church uh, as you are able will be able to to join us 
Uh, we start on a Friday afternoon. We'll be ending about 7, 7.30. Uh, we'll be getting some delicious food from, from Chef Larry and having dinner and breakfast and lunch together. Um, and then we'll have Bible study where the, the theme is wonderful and we're talking about that God does make us a wonderful world, but there's also questions that we wonder about. We wonder, does God really have a purpose for my life? Is God really there when things get tough? Um, other questions that we wonder about, we're gonna be talking about that uh, and see how Jesus brings healing and power, how he did it for the, the woman with the hemorrhage, and we'll be exploring that and other wonderful Bible stories. So they'll be fun together, uh, things to do together, time to be in, around the table and uh, chatting with each other, and, um, and music, and I hope um, my friend Tracy Brown, uh, she is finishing up as the director of Potosi Pines, which is our Methodist camp here in Desert Southwest Conference. It's just outside of Las Vegas. Uh, she and I and, um, and our other friend Amy, we've been doing these women's retreats together for a number of years. And um, we, have a little, we have a little fun. We bring a little camp to the retreat. Um, and so we hope that you will join us um, in that fun. Uh, there are registration forms in the back or by the office. They're also on the church's website and in the October newsletter. So uh, I hope you'll have fun. Uh, the other good thing, different from other retreats, you get to go home and sleep in your own bed. So you don't have to pack a suitcase. You don't have to, to do any of that. Um, we just ask you to wear comfortable clothes and bring your Bible and join us for, for a wonderful time of of being with each other and being with God. So hope you will join us. Uh, let us now receive our offering and I would ask the ushers to come forward. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, receive our gifts of self and substance. These gifts have belonged to you since our very beginning. We give them freely, joyfully, and prayerfully. With them, we praise you. With them, we celebrate the great power that is love. 
love that abides always, love that radically transforms, love that makes us whole. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ and all God's children said, Amen. Our first scripture lesson is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 through 17. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one loaf. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We continue uh, this month to sing Amazing Grace and to sing it to a couple different tunes. And so imagine my surprise when I discovered that Amazing Grace can be sung to the tune of the Gilligan's Island show. Yeah, so we're going to, to sing it in that way. Uh, the one thing we need to do to make it work is we need to repeat the, the last line of each verse. And so it is on, the words are on the, the insert in your bulletin as well. Let us stand and sing Amazing Grace, Gilligan's Island style. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. The hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have always. Come, tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun, than when we first begun. You may be seated. It just cracks me up how that works. <laughs> just, I find it very funny. Uh, now, it may be a, a, a while since we've been uh, at the movies in a movie theater, but we all remember how it goes, right? You have your, your bucket of popcorn, um, maybe some red vines, maybe some um, junior mints, and you settle down into the seat in the movie theater. But before the movie, what happens? Well, you've got the previews, right? You've got the previews, the, the trailers, the, the teasers of upcoming attractions. And if you're like me, perhaps you have a couple different reactions to it. Maybe there's one trailer and you're thinking, ooh, that looks, that looks great. 
when, when does that movie open? I want to make sure I see that one. Or maybe you, you watch it and you're watching the screen and you're just going, no way. <laughs> I'm not going to go bother with that movie. I'm sure I'm doing something else really important that day, like washing my hair or something much important than that. Or maybe you look at the trailer and you think, we saw all the best parts of that movie in that 60 second clip. <laughs> it's not going to get any better than that. Or maybe the harshest critique of them all, and it comes from my friend Mark. He might watch a movie trailer and he'll say, uh-uh, chick flick. <laughs> not going to watch it. But what the me movie previews do, what they're, they are there for, is to give us a taste of coming attractions. And uh, encourage us to, to watch what, to be there for what's coming up. But we're talking about Grace Anatomy, and the last several weeks we've been breaking down our under, how we understand grace, and today we're talking about the means of grace, the means of grace. And we're actually going to be talking about the means of grace in two parts, this Sunday and next Sunday. And what the means of grace do is to give us a taste of coming attractions in the movie, in, the, in, the, in heaven, not in the movie theater, but what is ahead for us. Means of grace are sacred moments where we know that Christ is with us and that we are reminded about God's gift of grace reminded about just how much God loves us. And through the means of grace, we receive the restraint for our daily walk with Christ. Now, the means of grace are visible symbols and activities that show God's love at work. They involve our physical senses through outward and visible signs, and they involve our spiritual senses through an inward and spiritual work of grace. They are the ways that God communicates to us his love, his mercy, God's forgiveness, communicates to us joy and peace. And another word for means of grace is sacrament. And sacrament means a sacred moment a sacred moment when Christ is represented or becomes present to us in a new way. Now, sacraments are sacred moments in which Jesus gave us clear instructions and uh, his example in the Bible. And the means of grace are times to discover and to celebrate God's love and presence, to experience Christ incarnate, Christ alive with us, and to know both the comfort, the acceptance, and the challenge that the Holy Spirit brings. So what we're going to be talking about today is what the means of grace do. Um, on the back of the Amazing Grace Gilligan's Island theme, there's also uh, an insert that has a sermon outline on it. So we're talking about what the means of grace do. And it is World Communion Sunday, first Sunday of the month when we um, have communion together. And guess which sacrament we're going to be talking about today? Communion. Oh, look at how that worked out. Now, communion goes by different titles. Uh, it can be called the Eucharist, uh, the Lord's Supper, the Great Thanksgiving. It points us to the, the Last Supper. Um, but one of the things that communion does is that it takes um, very common daily practices um, that are necessary for life, both eating and drinking, and it brings together simple food. Uh, the bread, as I mentioned, there is bread in every culture around the world, and the cup. And just like um, our daily meals help nourish us and keep us going, 
Uh, just as we need uh, liquid to continue to, to live, we also need the means of grace, not just for our physical life, but for our spiritual life, that we are spiritually nourished by this reminder, this example of God's love and grace to us. And God does that. He takes things that are simple, that are basic, that are necessary, and infuses within them new meaning so that we might be drawn closer to God. And God does that because he loves us. So we're going to see that one of the things that communion does, as what the means of grace do, is that they help us to look back they help us to look around, and they help us to look forward. Looking back, we see that one of the important words in the ritual, in the words that are said at communion as we break the bread and bless the cup, is the word remember. Remember. Jesus says, take, eat, and remember. Take, drink, and remember. When we come to communion, we come remembering what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, that God has sent his only son to the world for each and every one of us and for all the world throughout all of time. Now that word remember, we can understand that word in a couple of different ways. One is, has anybody ever had to study for a test, you know, try to cram all that information into your mind? Well, that's one way of remembering. Remembering dates, remembering names, remembering places, remembering history, remembering the rules, remembering how, how things work. That's one kind of remembering. There's another kind of remembering uh, and so we do, that, we do that kind of remembering as we think about God's salvation history with us, the story of how God reaches out to his people again and again and again, and our own personal history of how God's love has touched us. The other way to think about the word remember is I think about that when my girls were little and uh, Sunday morning or a big event at church, um, I would tell them, okay, girls, I need you on your best behavior. Remember who you are. You're the pastor's kids, the pastor's daughters, and um, mom has some ideas about how you're supposed to behave. Remember who you are. Now, that's not remembering details or names and places and times. It's more like open up your eyes. Remember. Um, wake up, remember, look, look, and see, and remember. Know who you are because God loves you. Know who you are because of what God has done for you. And then go out and live from that spot, from that way of thinking. And so we look back. Now, some people uh, come to communion, and they might have long faces. They, they might look very somber. And I do believe that, that communion is, is serious and important. But sometimes people come and, you know, they just look like they've lost their best friend. But, you know, you and I, as Christians, we have not lost our best friend. Our best friend is Jesus Christ, and Jesus is alive. Jesus was risen from the dead, and Jesus is alive. So we can come, uh, as our song said, our hymn said, come with joy. Yes, take it seriously, but also come with joy that we remember not just things in the past, but we remember and celebrate that Jesus is alive and present with us right now, right here. So we look back. Um, I encourage you this morning, 
Um, after you tear that piece of bread off and then come to dip it in the cup, when you dip it in the cup, I encourage you to say, I remember. I remember. And so let us look back and know the importance and the power of that word, remember. So looking back, but also looking around. Uh, for many years, um, I was the dean of an elementary camp uh, that met for a week every single summer, and it was always the best, the best week of the summer. Um, got to do camp with third, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders um, with all that energy, all that, all that crazy, all that fun. Uh, and at every camp, we would close with communion. Uh, we would gather at the um, outdoor chapel, a chapel area, and we'd make a big circle around, and we'd talk about what camp was that week, about the, the special things about it and what we've learned and how God was with us and how we were going to miss our camp friends. And then we would receive communion. And there was one year um, that I... Uh, just had sort of a, a flash in my mind. There were the campers from that week, and the counselors were there, and the rest of the camp staff, and was going around serving um, each camper uh, communion, the, the body and the blood. But then in my mind's eye, I also saw kids from other camps, camps that had happened 15 years before. Uh, and I thought of all the camps that happened um, at that camp during the summer, not just elementary camp, but junior high and senior high and young adult and adult uh, retreats and camps. And as you can imagine, in my, the, as picturing it in my mind, it was beginning to get kind of crowded. Um, there was people, people all over. But then I also thought about World Communion Sunday and thinking about how we are celebrating communion with people around the world. And it's not limited by place, it's also not limited by time. And so I thought about all that God invites us all. And so this is Jesus's table, and it is Jesus who makes the invitation for us to receive this means of grace. And all are welcome. All are, are there. All, peop all people around the world and throughout all time, um, back in history and in years to come, are welcome at the table for communion. So who is it with us at the table? Well, maybe you think about uh, somebody uh, that's not here this morning, or think about somebody who's in a country on the other side of the world from us. We are celebrating with them communion. I also want to share with you about a couple at one of my churches. Uh, this couple, their names were Ann and Andy. And yes, they did have Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy um, costumes. They, they would wear them to the Halloween uh, carnival and festival. Um, they were uh, a lot of fun together, um, but then um, Ann went through a three-year battle with cancer. And that battle took Anne's life. And Andy was devastated, uh, lost the love of his life, an experience that I know many of you have experienced as well. Um, but we, uh, it was a Saturday, we had a, a very uh, heartwarming memorial service for Anne, and um, Anne and Andy's family were um, all there. Uh, they had come from uh, all over the country and, um, and actually also from, from Germany to be there for her service. And the church was filled with, with people whose Anne's life had touched. And it was a beautiful service. But um, Sunday morning came, and I knew that, that Andy had a household, a house full of people, um, all of the family visiting. So I was very surprised to see him come in for worship on Sunday morning. And that Sunday morning was Communion Sunday, the first Sunday of the month. And 
I also noticed uh, at that church we had a communion rail. And um, Andy and Ann usually, you know, we all have our, our places that we sit in the pews. And their plate was, place was about halfway back. Um, but at the time of communion, Andy was the first one out of his pew and came down the aisle um, uh, to, to receive communion. And he received communion with tears in his eyes. And after the service, I was able to talk to him. And I said, you know, Andy, I'm, I'm so happy you're here, but I just need to tell you I'm a little surprised with everybody you have at home. And he told me, my Anne is feasting with Jesus this morning. And this is the place where I can be the closest to her and the closest to Jesus. What a beautiful statement about the means of grace, about what God can do for us, even when our hearts are grieving, are hurting. God brings us together beyond the, the boundaries of life on this planet and life forever, and it brought Andy close to Anne that morning. So when we are, are gathering for communion, we can remember what God has done, and we can see that God is with us right now, and that we are connected with God and with people that we love. So looking back, looking around, and looking forward. Uh, the other thing that communion does, the means of grace do, is they point us to the future. They point us to eternity. They invite us, they tell us to come to the party. Uh, we're told in, in parables of the, the great banquet, we're told in what Jesus did at the Last Supper um, as he took the, the ritual, the, the practice of Passover, which had ha happened for centuries, Jesus infused it with new meaning and let us know that it is his body which is broken and his blood that is spilt, and that this is God's plan, that we might be with God forever. And now, we Methodists know something about um, uh, a feast, uh, about a, uh, a table that's got all sorts of, of options on it, don't we? Because we know all about the potluck. Well, uh, there is a grand feast that God has planned for us, uh, a party of celebration and of praise. And communion is like a movie teaser. It gives us just a taste of what that will be like when we too are with God forever. <coughs> so we are invited to look to the future where this simple meal, this simple act, infused with spiritual meaning, points us to all that we will celebrate when we are fully in God's presence. Now, I've got a funny story to tell you. Uh, there's a story that, that talks about that um, before Jesus came to earth, um, Jesus and God the Father were, were laying out the, the plan of how, how they were going to bring salvation to God's people, about how Jesus was going to come to earth and show us how to live a perfect life, to show us how to, to live the life that's filled with God's love and grace. And so they were going through um, each part about being born in Bethlehem and what would happen and um, his years of public ministry. And so they were going through each individual part. Uh, and then they came to, to the part where God the Father told Jesus that, that he would have to die, that he would die for the sins of the world. He would die so that we might be reconciled with God. But in this story, God the Father tells Jesus that Jesus can choose from two choices how he's going to die. Jesus said, okay, and God says, you can die by crucifixion, you can die on the cross, 
or you can die by being stung to death by killer bees. And Jesus was going, oh my goodness, um, both are terrible ways to die. So much, so much pain, so much um, panic, so many things going on. Uh, the cross, crucifixion, or, or killer bees, it's not really much of a choice. And Jesus said, well, um, I'm going to choose the cross. I will choose to, to be obedient to your will, O oh God, by dying on the cross. And Father God went, whew! And Jesus said, what? What? Well, God said, because doing this, making the sign of the cross, is so much better than this. <laughs> well, that's a silly story. But the other things the means of grace do, the other thing that communion does, is that it puts the sign of the cross, it reminds us of the cross, God reaching down to us and how we're connected with God and the, vert or the horizontal, how we're connected with each other through God, it points us to the cross. And so the question for you about the means of grace is how does God help keep the sign of the cross in your faith journey? Where do you see reminders of what God has done for you? Where do you see Jesus present with you right now? And where do you look forward for all that Christ, all the promises that Christ will fulfill, everything that God will bring to you and to me and to the world through his grace? Let us remember, let us celebrate, and let us rejoice. Amen? Amen. Let us hear this prayer for World Communion Sunday. Jesus prayed that we might be one, one in spirit, one in mission, one in union and communion with each other and with you. Today, God, we confess our fumblings and our failures in bringing about unity and connection. On this World Communion Sunday, give us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of Christians everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and, and to celebrate our differences. Give us a heart big enough to love your children everywhere. We thank you for setting a table with space enough for us all. Amen. Well, we come now to receive communion. And uh, again, I want to run through the instructions because we haven't done it this way in, in a long time. Um, I do also want to, to say a thank you to Roseanne McGuire and to Betty Zingri. Um, they provided our globes for the one here on the, our bread table and the one on the altar. And I also want to say thank you to our communion team. Um, they uh, went above and beyond to um, get us breads from different places around the world and to, to help display that. So um, our thanks to you as well. Uh, again, uh, we will go through uh, the, uh, our, our ritual of the great Thanksgiving and then um, you will be invited to come forward down the center aisle uh, all the breads will, will be uncovered, and um, you can uh, pick a bread, uh, tear off a piece, and then hang on to that piece. Uh, if you want to, to stop and touch the globe or uh, just have a, a, a little moment of prayer for uh, lifting up a place in our world, uh, I invite you to do that. Um, I'll just let you know, you don't need to, um, you, you can just pick one of the breads. 
Um, you, you get to decide, but it, this isn't like a smorgasbord where you, know, you can be there for a half an hour picking <laughs> because that will, that will block up the, the way. Um, but just invite you to, to tear off or break off uh, a piece of the bread. Hang on to that and then come forward to Pastor Stephanie or to me uh, and dip it into the cup and you can say, I remember and then you can return by the side aisles uh, to, to your seats. And may this time of communion be uh, a part of how the means of grace bless us all. If you are unable to come forward, um, just let the ushers know and they will um, bring communion to you. And so you also can participate in this means of grace. I think I covered everything. If not, <laughs> I'll, I'll fill you in. But let us come to this, this time of communion. Stephanie? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. To give the thanks to praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now receive communion, and I would invite Kathy and, and Matt to receive first. Folks in the front invite you to come forward to receive this means of grace. The body and blood of Jesus for you, Lenore. Jesus' body and blood for you, Jerry. Oh, man. The body and blood of Jesus, amen. Thank you. Jesus' body and blood for you, Barry. This is the body and the blood of Jesus given for you. Jesus' body and blood given for you. This is the body and blood of Jesus given for you. Thank you. Take, eat, and remember. Dip it in the cup. And if you'll go this way. You're going to go this way. I'm okay. sorry. You're perfect. The body and blood of Jesus given for you. Margaret, the body and blood of Jesus given for you. This is Jesus' body and blood given for you. Eva, the body and blood of Jesus given for you. This is Jesus' body and blood given for you. The 
body and blood of Jesus given for you. Jesus' body and blood given for you. The body and blood of Jesus given for you, Nan. Take, eat, and remember. body and blood of Jesus given for you, Walter. Take, eat, and remember. The body and blood of Jesus given for you, Donna. Colleen, this is the body and blood of Jesus given for you. Take, eat, The body and blood of Jesus given for you, Betty. This is the body and blood of Jesus given for you, Tom. Ruthie, the body and blood of Jesus given for you. This is the body and blood of Jesus given for you. body of Jesus and his blood shed for you, Shirley. Take, eat, and remember. I remember. Amen. Just set the chalice down. Stephanie, this is the body and blood of Jesus given and shed for you. Thanks be to God. May this means of grace fill us and nourish us for the journey ahead of us with God this week. Let us now stand for our closing hymn. It is number 431, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
May the Lord bless you in the service of a world in deep need. May the Lord break you for your growth and wholeness. May the Lord give you a way like bread to revive the starving, like wine to comfort the sorrowing. Remember his body broken for you, his blood shed for you. And go now in peace and be thankful. Amen. Amen. Please join us for our sung benediction, Take Our Bread. Take our bread, we ask you, take our hearts, we love you, take our lives, oh Father, we are yours, we are yours, yours as we stand on the table you set, yours as we eat the bread our hearts can't forget, we are we sign of your life with us yet we are yours 